Can robots really take away our jobs in the 21st century? Well, this is a question left for the experts. Welcome to another exciting episode of your favorite tech show, Tech TV, a show about technology and science. Today, we are at Academic City University and we will be talking about robots. My name is Deborah Doma Kanobala and I'll be your host. Let's go for Tech Flash. Smart Armor Cube. Meet Smart Cube, the world's first in home Bluetooth locking system. It's pretty much the most innovative mobile and powered locking system for personal products. Using this device, you can locate valuables, share access to others, and track your activation history. You can also collect data and provide analytics, all while ensuring personal security on the go. The gadget will allow you to share access with who you want and lock and unlock when you want. It also comes with a tamper alert system that will send a push notification to your device if anyone tries to steal your valuables. The creators designed the locking system smartly, which activates by entering biometric data or an alphanumeric code. The gadget will last you a whole year with a single 3 volt lithium ion CR2 battery. It's super easy to install and the ultimate go-to device if you're looking to make your belongings secure. Community College is an ultra-modern primary and secondary school that runs the Cambridge International Program. It's a day and boarding school stretching from the preschool to A-levels, and we are guided by a strong foundation in ethics and Christian morals. At ICC, children get the opportunity to engage in interesting activities such as ballet, taekwondo, swimming, music, basketball, football, just to mention a few. We give our students the option to travel outside Ghana to explore limitless opportunities in other countries and to broaden their knowledge based on cultures, technological advancements, and international mindedness. The school has developed and is running an efficient online learning system where students interact with their teachers through the adoption of online learning platforms with our use of state-of-the-art online tools. Visit our website at www.icc.edu.gh to learn more about us. We also look forward to your on-site visit to experience a serene learning environment awaiting your work. You have a wish list of home improvements? Do you have a growing to-do list of repairs and maintenance? Are you overwhelmed by contractors specializing in only one area? Every homeowner has a to-do list and a wish list. Both are important, and you deserve a handyman that can get the job done right the first time. No job is too small or too large. Our U.S. trained handymen handle all your repair and remodel needs quickly and professionally. From plumbing and electrical to air conditioning, carpentry, masonry, you name it, we will get it done perfectly. Contact us today at www.kbfsystems.com. KBF Handyman Service. We do it right the first time. Welcome back from Tech Flash. If you just tune in, you're watching Tech TV, your favorite show on technology and science. As you know, Tech TV always brings you nothing but the best. And today, we have a great personality on our show as usual, Julian, a lecturer at Academic City University. Hi, Julian. You're welcome on Tech TV. Thank you. I'm really excited to have you on the show. I'm excited to be on the show. <laughs> okay, great. So, Julian, can you please just tell us who are you? Who is Julian? Okay, so um, I am the coordinator for the Mechanical and Industrial and Systems Engineering Department at Academic City. Okay. Um, I love engineering, as you may have guessed. Um, I like building things, making things, designing and manufacturing things. 
Okay, that's so great. That's basically. Okay, that's beautiful. <laughs> okay, so I think an, a new or emerging technology that is taking over our world is robotics, right? Yes. So could you please just tell us a bit of what, what is robotics? Robotics has to do with the design, manufacture, um, application, and generally use of robots. Anything that has to do with robots. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, normally when we talk about robots, uh, many people cast their minds to that humanoid structure with hands and legs and that usually helps you in, I don't know, well in the movies they would help you in your kitchen yeah, and places like that. Yeah, but robots don't always look like human beings. You know, sometimes it could be just a robot arm or you could have a structure that doesn't even look like a robot. You know, maybe something that helps you. I mean, in, in the strictest sense of the word, a robot assists you to get things done, mm -hmm. but it has some level of in intelligence compared to your typical machine. Okay, so mm -hmm. robots have some level of intelligence. Yes. So now the fear for most people is that with the emergence of artificial intelligence and robots, they're going to take away our jobs. I am afraid I don't want to lose my <laughs> job. So what, well, what really, is this really a, a, a call for concern for all of us? Is it really going to take well, our jobs? I, I would say we human beings have the final say in making that decision. You know, we program the robots. So it depends on the level of intelligence we put to the robots. Mm -hmm. Now, at some level, there comes a point beyond which the robot can evolve, especially when we're looking at machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know. The robot can evolve on its own, but we still get to control the extent to which it does the evolution. So if we keep that in mind as we go ahead with the programming and the design and control, we should be able to, let's say, keep them in check. Okay, yeah. so we can keep them in check. We can keep okay. them in check. So if I happen to study robotics engineering, what yeah. are the job prospects that are available to me? Uh, it's quite a number. The good thing about robotics is it's a multidisciplinary program. You know, so you get to learn a bit of mechanical engineering, you learn a bit of electrical engineering, electrical electronics engineering, you learn a bit of programming, computer engineering. So effectively what that means is you can go into a mechanical engineering field and do anything that they are doing here. You can go into an electrical electronics engineering field and do anything that they do there. We have a lot of IT companies now. You can go in there, and if it's just programming you have to do, you can do the programming for them. But if you have to program robots, that would be your field, so it's easy to do that. Uh, robotics engineers can also go into other fields like um, systems engineering, uh, data analysis, you know, um, yeah, things like that. They are, they, are, they are not so clear on the outside or they may not look like robotics fields or robotics engineering fields. But with the knowledge you get from robotics engineering, you should be able to work in those fields. So a lot of job prospects that are available to people who study robotics engineering. So coming back to Ghana as yeah. a country, yeah. do you think that we are ready to actually start a program in robotics engineering? Yes, yes. Actually, since we started talking about this program here at Academic City, there are two big questions we get asked a lot, very often. Um, first one is, why robotics? Right. And then the second one is, um, what happens to our jobs? You know, people are afraid that if robots come in, they will start losing their jobs, okay? So I'll try to answer both questions. Now, to answer the first one, uh, we believe Ghana has gotten to a stage where um, in the not too distant future, there will be the need for robotics. You know, we, we, we've, we've gotten to a stage where we are slowly running out of our resources and we have to do a lot more. We have to innovate with the little we have or what we have mm -hmm. left. You know, it's like, um, let's say a farmer who has um, one acre of farmland. There's only so much he can do on the farm. But as time goes on, fuel prices go up, food prices go up, things, the price of things go up on the outside. There's one of two things that he can do. He can either increase the prices of his products or he can innovate, you know, come up with ways of generating more value from that region of space. You know, now, through robotics, you are going to improve the um, things like precision efficiency with which you do things. So in a manufacturing plant, for example, um, a car company in Ghana now may not be able to do more than 500 cars in a month. Mm -hmm. Now, the same kind of an automobile company in the US or the UK will be churning out a thousand vehicles in a week or even a day. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the difference? It's robotics. On one hand, 
Without the robots, you can't even start the job. You can't even create the job opportunities. So the robots are needed to create that job opportunity. Then once they come in, they, they help take care of the, the kind of tasks that human beings would normally not be able to do, yeah. like precision machine. Uh, you try to, I saw you drilling something through wood, okay? Yeah. Now if I asked you to measure some amount of wood and cut, by the time you're done cutting two or three pieces of the same block, you realize that not all the pieces are the same. It's not your fault. We are human beings. We are not perfect. So we end up having one go a little higher than the other, or maybe at the time of cutting, you might attack at the wrong angle. Something just goes off, usually, from time to time. But robots are given a level of precision that enables them to repeat the same thing they are doing over and over again. And you can design robots to be faster than human beings. You can design robots to work more efficiently than human beings. Okay. Another field where you find robotics in is um, disaster management. You know, let's say a house crumples down and we know there are a lot of human beings there. We can send human beings out to go and rescue them. But what if in the process of them going there, some more blocks fall down? They could fall on the people who are going to rescue them. But if we send robots out there, even if the blocks fall on them, we know that's not necessarily a life loss. Yes, but robots can be enhanced with more strength to be able to tackle some of these challenges the way human beings cannot. Yeah, and we believe that Ghana is getting to the stage where we need that. Another area is education. You know, mm -hmm. and actually, it's already been practiced now. If you go into the primary schools, some primary schools have their own robotics laboratories. Okay. Yes. Others, what they do is they invite some of these tech-based organizations. They come in and um, they help the children with um, things like Lego blocks, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, some sensors and actuators. And the students learn how to put these things together to implement something that they want to implement on their own. And in the process, they improve their thinking, they build their confidence. So by the time you come out of primary school, regardless of which field you end up in, you would have improved yourself as a person. Okay. You know? So and these are all areas where you'd find robots. And there's many more, I and mean, I could give okay. many more examples. So which means that we actually have some institutions that are already teaching um, students how to program robots. So I want to know what kind of robots do they design? We have this robotic arm and others, so yeah, what are the nature it's, of robots? It's usually basic stuff uh, and what happens is they come in the form of a kit. Okay. So it could be a robotic arm, okay. but then you would have the pieces packaged into a box or some rubber pack. Okay? Okay. So the students come out and then they take the pieces and then try to connect them together. There might be a manual to guide them. Yes, and then there's a way they can connect it to a computer so they can write a small code okay. to enable the arm move back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or they can have some kind of a remote control, so depending on which buttons they press on the remote control, you can get the arm to move back and okay. forth. Okay. We also have what you call the EV3, that's a Lego-based uh, robotic system. So that comes pretty much pre-designed, mm -hmm. although there are, uh, you, we could have the option to build two or three different things from the set of pieces, the pieces that you get together. Okay, so that's at the base level. Now, at a slightly more advanced level, you would have something like um, an Arduino kit. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Arduino kits would come with uh, what we call a microcontroller, it's like the control unit for anything or a variety of things you'd want to control. Then to have sensors like we call an ultrasonic sensor, um, we have LEDs that give you light, we have motors, and we have um, Servos. Servos are special kinds of motors. Okay, so you can connect, for example, the LED to your control unit and then write a program that can get the LED to light, you know, turn on and off depending on the time frame that you set for it. Okay, you can also write a program to turn on a motor. Okay, or you can write a program so that the ultrasonic sensor, what it does is when you bring your hand to within some uh, centimeters of it, it's able to detect that distance and then give feedback to the control unit. So you can program that unit in such a way that if a, an arm gets to within 20 centimeters of it, it can actuate something, yeah. maybe turn on a, open a door, a door open or right. yeah, pump some water into right. something. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. So these are the kind of bits and pieces that people are doing. At a slightly more advanced level, for here at Academic City, we have students working on, uh, for example, we have a smart bin. Okay. Okay, so we gave them this challenge actually when they were in their first year, for those who are in their third year now. And uh, their, their challenge was to design a robot that could do at least three things. One, it should detect 
when your arm is coming close to the lid and then opens. So when your arm comes to within 20 centimeters of the lid, it opens, okay? Then the second thing is it's supposed to detect when the bin itself is full. Now when it detects that the bin is full, the robot's supposed to have wheels and it's supposed to drive itself to a central location where there's a larger bin so we can empty wow. its contents. Yeah, so and this is something the students have currently it's, done here? They've actually done it, oh, yeah, so okay. we have it roaming around. Would somewhere. love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I mean, these are the ex examples of things that you right. typically see here. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering, what, what do you think the future of robotics hold for us in Ghana? In Ghana. Yes. Yeah, so like I said, um, we have a few manufacturing companies here. I think I saw... Um, a number of um, food, a lot of what you do is food yeah. processing or food production, okay? But now um, we have about two or three companies that want to go into car manufacturing. Yeah, it's still, let's call it car assembly. You know, they, they bring the parts from outside the country and then they assemble them here. Yeah, but it's, it's a step in mm. the right direction. With time, they'll be able to take a company like that, the engine, okay? And then manufacture it from scratch. Now, once you set up an assembly line with all these functions going on, there are certain areas where there'll be the need for precision work. Okay, so let's say VW decides that they want to start assembling the body of the car, that's the metal parts. You need to be able to cut the metal, you need to be able to shape the metal, there's a way you can put it into different shapes, depending on what you want, of course. And then you need to bring these pieces together and weld them. Mm -hmm. Now, human beings can do that, but then they're not so, they, they, they don't, they, they're, not, they're not able to do it with the level of precision that robots can. So eventually you need to bring in a robot to take care of that part. Yes. Okay. So for manufacturing, we're going to have robots coming in. We have pre-designed bots, you know, technically drones can be seen as robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 3D printers can help you print um, an arm. If you have time to build the, whole, the entire body, actually you can do that with a 3D printer. You know, just get the pieces together and assemble them, depending on how well you design them. Yeah, um, in, in the area of um, disaster management, I know anytime we have floods, NADMO gets into trouble because you know, they, they virtually don't know what to do in terms of rescuing people. Human beings go there to help, okay, but I, I believe there would come a time where it would be necessary for robots to step in to help with that kind of um, work. Then, of course, there's um, the area of um, handling things like toxic waste, bombs, and stuff. So we have Ghana Atomic Energy. They're working on a project to um, build an uh, atomic plant you know, for generating electricity. Hopefully, we're hoping that nothing would break down. But if something should go wrong, it's totally a bad idea for human beings to be in the vicinity. So they have to have robots on standby to take care of such disasters. And even now, you know, if, if they, at the time that they built it, it would be safer to have robots going into certain areas to take care of certain tasks that um, human beings were doing before, but it's better we don't have human beings doing. Yeah, if there's a bomb scare somewhere, I mean, uh, I know we have a bomb squad, but I'd rather not be a member on that team. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, the need is there. It's, it's just a question of when we're going to start using robots to take care of those things. Yeah. All right. So I uh, we'll just want to wrap up and I want you to just give your final words with regards okay. to people who actually don't believe that Ghana is ready to actually run programs in robotics and students who still feel that they are not good enough to actually study a degree or program in robotics. So just yeah. your final words. Yeah, so I will just say for a fact that Ghana is ready for robotics and um, the robotics program is a four-year program. So if you don't think we have an environment for it now, I'm sure in four years' time, by the time you are ready, you're going to have such an industry that you'll be happy that you jumped into it at this point in time. So all the best. Jump into it now. <laughs> okay. So Gillian says you should jump in robotics now and Ghana is actually ready for it. So thank you so much, Gillian, for making the time pleasure to so talk mine. to us. Yeah. And I hope to have you some time on the show now showing us physical robots doing tasks for Certainly. Us. We go for a quick commercial break. And remember, Tech TV is proudly brought to you by Compu Ghana, KBF Systems, and Chase Sporting Club. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs>
International Community College is an ultra-modern primary and secondary school that runs the Cambridge International Programme. It's a day and boarding school stretching from the preschool to A-levels, and we are guided by a strong foundation in ethics and Christian morals. At ICC, children get the opportunity to engage in interesting activities such as ballet, taekwondo, swimming, music, basketball, football, just to mention a few. We give our students the option to travel outside Ghana to explore limitless opportunities in other countries and to broaden their knowledge based on cultures, technological advancements, and international mindedness. The school has developed and is running an efficient online learning system where students interact with their teachers through the adoption of online learning platforms with our use of state-of-the-art online tools. Visit our website at www.icc.edu.gh to learn more about us. We also look forward to your on-site visit to experience a serene learning environment awaiting your ward. You have a wish list of home improvements? Do you have a growing to-do list of repairs and maintenance? Are you overwhelmed by contractors specializing in only one area? Every homeowner has a to-do list and a wish list. Both are important, and you deserve a handyman that can get the job done right the first time. No job is too small or too large. Our U.S. trained handymen handle all your repair and remodel needs quickly and professionally. From plumbing and electrical to air conditioning, carpentry, masonry, you name it, we will get it done perfectly. Contact us today at www.kbfsystems.com. KBF Handyman Service. We do it right the first time. Welcome back from the break. You're still watching Tech TV. Remember to follow Tech TV on all our social media platforms. Let's get interactive. Now let's go have some fun with passion for technology and some safety tips. Hi, my name is Nathan Elasiak and with me here is Wisdom Mahami. We are students of Academic City College. We study electrical engineering and we are both in level 300. I had discussions with Wisdom about building a device that could potentially help move vaccines in remote areas because growing up I observed the immunization campaigns of medical doctors and they usually had boxes that were packed with eyes and that was the only source of cooling the devices. On the other hand, he also had a peculiar challenge of moving vaccines from vets here in Accra to vets in his farm in the north. And so from our discussion, we figured out a technology that would actually cause active cooling. And we are excited to talk to you today about that device and where we are in our development stage and where we hope to take this device. So for this device, we decided to name it FlexiCool in terms of it being a flexible device and it's, been, it's performing the cooling functionality that it's designed to. And so I would allow my colleague to actually start connecting this uh, what we have here so that we can actually see how it works. So in our design process, we are considering setting key parameters. So the first one was the cost of the unit. The second parameter was the weight. And we considered the power consumption and the power reliability of the whole unit. So the power consumption of this device, it runs on a 12 volt power supply, which is a very low power that we have over here. Then the weight that we are considering, it shouldn't be more than three kilos. So right now we're going to take you through how the whole unit operates and the, each component. What we have here is the power supply and so right now we are looking at converting an AC source to a DC source but in the subsequent developments we are looking at using an offside battery and a solar panel because we are looking at remote areas and people being able to use this device offside or remotely. Over here we have the cooling unit which is um, fans and the heat sink and the actual cooling device inside. On the other side of it, you also have fans and um, heat sinks and the other side of the cooling device in there. So this is actually the technology powering this. This is quite different from normal refrigeration in that the unit is quite small, you don't need movable parts and it's compact so you can actually reduce it to the size that you want, making it easier to move vaccines or temperature sensitive medical supplies easily. You also have here the temperature monitoring device because what we realized is most of the technology or most of the existing coaching boxes don't really have the capability to measure the temperature inside the boxes. So what we've provided here is the functionality to be able to measure the temperature and display it to the user or the health professional, whoever is moving the supplies. And so one of the things we are looking at also improving upon is to 
enable an app interface so that you can monitor the temperature on your mobile phone and then use it to control here. What we have here actually regulates and measures, so we are doing two things in one. So we are providing the health professionals the functionality of knowing the temperature inside the box they are transporting the supplies in and also getting to control the temperature to the set or standard limit that they are needed to transport the vaccines. So right now the device is actually turned on and it's reading about 32 degrees. So let's wait for a while to see how much it cools and what the final temperature is. Right now we have about 11 degrees and what this means is that it's actually colder than the coldest point your air condition could actually give you. But this is not exactly what we want. We want to measure temperatures between the ranges of 2 to 8 degrees and actually go into the negatives because we are targeting vaccines that need to move under these temperatures. This means we need to go back to the lab and we need to work at getting the proper insulation and the right materials to get us between those two ranges. Now let's take a look at what is actually causing the temperature change from the inside. And so as I stated earlier, we have the same configuration on the inside as we have on the outside. And so this is actually what is causing the cooling from the inside. This is what we're working on right here in Academic City in Ghana. And we hope that if you have any support or if you feel like you can help us to make this more nicer, I mean, we encourage you to reach out to us and then we'll be willing to accept and hear your feedback on that. Thank you so much Tech TV for having us here. We are really glad that we got to showcase our project. And to anyone out there who has any support for us, we kindly encourage you to reach out to Pass by Academic City and we, we are happy to collaborate and make this project move to the next level. In our modern world, we use many electronic devices to stay in touch. The electricity provided by PSEG Long Island allows us to do amazing things and stay connected to family, friends, and the outside world. However, when we can't use these tools due to a power outage, it can be very frustrating. Many families have purchased backup generators to mitigate the impact of short-term outages. If you decide a permanent standby generator is best for you and your family, have it installed by a licensed electrician and make sure it meets fire underwriter regulations and have the installer brief you on in all safety aspects of the generator's operation. A portable generator should only be used outside on stable ground away from any windows and vents to prevent deadly fumes from entering the home. Protect your family with smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Read the manufacturer's instructions for all equipment and monitoring devices so you can operate the generator as safely as possible. Devices should be plugged in directly to the portable generator. Do not connect the generator to your home's wiring. Power can flow out of your home into the electric system, creating a hazard for crews working in the area. That is why a licensed electrician installs an appropriate transfer switch. Never fill a generator with fuel while it's running or hot, and don't store gasoline in your home. Remember, safety is for everyone. You can share safety tips with family, friends, and neighbors. Wow, wow. So ventilators are being produced under our own watch here at Academic City University in Ghana. That's really amazing. So if you are a creative inventor and want to showcase your product, kindly reach out to us via our social media platforms or send a message to us by our WhatsApp number shown on your screen. And remember, Tech TV is proudly brought to you by Compu Ghana, KBEF Systems, and Chase Fulton Club. My name is Deborah Doma Kanobala, and I have been your host. See you same time next week. Bye for now.